What's going on everyone? Welcome to the video. Doing another gravel ride out here in Rockville Center, Long Island, which is in New York. And today we've actually got the Wabi Thunder and that beautiful desert turquoise. Hold on, I got sneeze. Wabi Thunder, beautiful desert turquoise colorway. And I just made a video about running 28 millimeter wide tires on this bike. Someone asked me, what do I eat for longer rides? I think Jay Jitten's Mira, sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name. Boom, right there. Got some fig bars. I usually carry three or four fig bars in the bar bag, or I just carry them in my pockets in my backpack, or if I'm wearing cycling kit, I throw them in the back of my back pockets. Now, pretty cool today, actually testing out these new Panaracer Gravel King SS TLR, I believe. I think they're R's. They're the new models for 2024 in a size 40. Bought these with my own money. I think they're less than $50 a pair. You can see those are the tires. Plenty of clearance in the front. This bike has tons of clearance, even with the mini V-brakes. The rear, down by the chain stays. We're good there. We're good up here. It gets a bit tight right here. Can barely fit my pinky in, but overall that's actually pretty decent clearance right there. I don't feel the need to go wider than 40 millimeter tires anyway especially since I've done a lot of gravel on 32 millimeter tires, no problem. 40s should make everything feel like a breeze. And I've got the SKS Raceblade Pro XL on the back. This is rated for a 32 millimeter tire. You could see, you can do it with a 40. It gets a bit close around here. You just gotta run it, run it a bit higher. You know, don't run it close to the tire. The sides might rub. Run it higher. It's not going to work quite as well as a proper wide tire you're still probably going to get some dirt and some water spraying out but for me for what i'm doing this one actually works perfectly fine and i love the fact that these are just quick release fenders and they have amazing coverage so i'm overall pretty psyched to be trying some proper wide gravel tires and i'm also happy to report that i had about a five minute road ride just to get here to the trails and while they weren't quite as fast on the acceleration as the narrower 28s or even 32s, they picked up speed reasonably, speed, they picked up speed reasonably well. And they also held speed pretty good as well. And I was a bit surprised that they held speed. They kept going. Like I said, not as fast as a proper race tire, but definitely the fastest gravel tires that I've ridden so far. Let's see how they do on proper gravel. So this is just what I call luxury gravel. So far, so good. But it is kind of nice to be able to just not have to think about slowing down like I was when I was on narrow road tires. Got some sand right here. Ooh. Going through sand, going through sand. This is a great idea, but we're committing to it. So realizing the nice thing about this bike is I'm not using clip-in pedals. It's flat pedals and vans. So pretty easy if I put my foot down. So I'm finding that the wider tires definitely go through sand a bit easier. Surprisingly. Yeah, we got a bunch of sand right here. So I'm filming this video at the end of the summer 2024. It's September 3rd, 4th, something like that. I gotta say, if this was the beginning of the season and I wasn't in shape, I'd be struggling. Riding single speed bikes definitely builds leg strength much faster than just riding a geared bike or geared bikes and constantly taking advantage of the downshifting. I remember this. Definitely much more stable on proper gravel tires going like twice the speed on my road race tires I had to go 10 miles an hour or lower now we're cruising at uh, 15 15 miles an hour Got someone behind us Thank you. Cruising through sand, cruising right through it. Cruising, floats over the sand. So 
So, so far we're about four miles in. We made one revolution around the lake. And I've got to say, the 40 millimeter tires really do make a big difference. Is this smudgy? Hold on. At the wipe lens. The 40 millimeter gravel tires make a huge difference when going over things like medium gravel, sand. The bike just floats. It just wants to go straight and it's very unbothered, very stable and very confidence inspiring. So last time I talked about how do you need a gravel bike? No, you don't. If you're riding gravel and you have gravel tires, big tires like that, will it help? Absolutely. It's just the right tool for the job. And the next question I'm going to ask is, do you need disc brakes? Then you need variable gears. Most of the time, yeah, especially for off-road. But I got to say that these mini V-brakes down here, TRP CX 8.4s, super, super powerful. Never felt like I needed more stopping power, and they actually work pretty well with big, chunky tires like this. Gears, as we find a leaf in there. Gears. Yeah, of course, gears make everything easier. You can go up hills easier. You can go down hills easier. You can chill. You don't always have to muscle up hills the way we had to do it with this single speed. However, there's a couple of hills here, and I'm getting over all of them, and I'm not even in the greatest shape. I've been riding quite a bit, but not as much. I'm talking less than 50 miles a week just for the past two months. While I am looking at gravel bikes, I do want to get a titanium gravel bike with disc brakes and 2x12 Shimano GRX most likely. I've got to ask myself if something like this, rim brakes, single speed, if this can do everything I need it to do, do I really need anything else? Guess we'll have to see. Back on it. Let's see what we can find down here. I don't know how sketchy this is going to be. Got those wide tires and the powerful rim brakes. Should be okay. I have one foot off the pedal. Uh, we, I could have got down that with just, uh, I like to be careful. We got quite a bit of sand down here. Uh, bike just floats over the sand very nicely. I don't know if the trail's gonna leave us high and dry. Oh, geez. Just muscled through that. Roots. Hands on the brakes. Right by the water. A lot of roots. Oh, geez. My foot down on that one. It's pretty, pretty crazy over here. Pretty insane. Here, I can't get too comfortable over here. Roots just come out of nowhere. And the trail may just try to dump us into the water. Big difference on proper, proper tires. Would not be able to do this on anything but 35 mil tires or greater. Just cutting through all this sand with ease. Slipping a little bit, but you're good. Good way to get some bike control. This sand probably gets pretty deep. Oh yeah. Deep sand. Up. Oh, that's it. That's how deep the sand is. Time to go back to the normal person trails. Oh God, no momentum climbing. One thing about single speeds, when you climb, you gotta keep the momentum going. Otherwise, a really hard time starting. This is overall a pretty cool part of the trail. One of my favorite parts actually. Go this way, the bumps here and there. This gravel is really nice and groomed, so you can 
speed pass. Mind the speeding squirrels across your path, though. Those will take you out. This is cool. The wooden railings I like. Nice little meadow. I wonder what they're going to do with that. A bit of sand. Keep the momentum up though, we're good. Didn't even have to stand up. Yeah, cruising, cruising through the gravel on these Gravel King SS. 40 millimeter width. I didn't actually measure them, but I put in the other day, two days ago, I put in 45 PSI in the front and rear, and I let a little bit, little bit out, so I'd have to say probably about 35 PSI, give or take. I like to go as low as possible, but when you stand up and sprint, you don't feel that bounciness of the, of the tires. That's like my sweet spot. You, you get the best of both worlds. Um, also, no tubeless for me right now. I'm done with tubeless. I'm on TPU inner tubes. Whether I go back to tubeless in the future, who knows? But for right now, been off tubeless for a while. No regrets. Yeah. All right, this is a bit more chunkier gravel. It's still light gravel. Let's make a left. Not confident enough to lean the bike over yet. It leads us to a cul-de-sac. Actually pretty dangerous to be in an area like this because we get jumped very easily. I don't like it. Let's get the hell out of here. <laughs> Usually, Areas like that, I've heard they're called the hole or a hole. One way in, one way out. Easy to get cornered. Keep your wits about you. you keep your, keep your strength smarts about you too. All right, a little bit of a hill. Chunkiness right here. So one of the issues I can already see and I've experienced with my single speed road bike, my Wabi Classic, narrow tires is when you are climbing uphill, you have to stand up. When you stand up, a lot of your weight pitches forward and then your rear tire just spins. That's kind of a real limitation of a single speed off-road bike. Gravel, cyclocross, mountain, whatever. You want to keep your weight in the back so that you maintain traction but unless you're super strong, which we're getting there. <laughs> nowhere near uh, nowhere near there though yet. Unless you're super strong, you're gonna have to stand up and then the rear tire is gonna slip. But hey, that's it's part of the experience of a single speed bike. You know, you just have to make compromises. Over time, improve your technique. You know, single speed bikes, they, you know, they force you to improve your technique and just get stronger. It's you can't rely on mechanical advantage of gears to go up a sketchy hill with loose rocks. Go to the gym too. Do the leg press. Ever since I started doing leg press at the gym two or three times a week, a lot easier to go uphill on my wabbies. Eat before you're hungry, drink before you're thirsty. Don't wanna, don't wanna be bonking. Jeez happened over there. It's like someone set that on fire. Rim brakes. Can rim brakes handle the loose stuff? Single track? I mean, look, rim brakes. That's how powerful they are. Going along and two fingers. Two fingers. Bike just V brakes. Rim brakes for the win. You need disc, 
Yeah, sure. Who knows anymore? Rim brake, disc brake, whatever you choose. Rim brake's definitely simpler, cheaper to operate, but you gotta clean your rims and clean your brake pads a lot. Disc brakes, more set it, forget it. Wider tires, you know, once in a while. Straighten a bent rotor, and that's pretty much it. Bleed the brakes every, I don't know. Some people say every year. I've gone five years without bleeding the brakes and totally fine. But even if you do have to do it, it's not, not a big job. Not a big job at all. Nothing compares to the mess that is tubeless tires. Tubeless is the worst. Takes the longest, most frustrating. Hydro disc is much easier to live with than that. So yeah, rim versus disc, it's up to you. Check out Reginald Scott's video on rim brakes. He did a really good job on it, talking about a lot of pros to rim brakes and it really has me rethinking, you know, rim brakes are all you need. Of course, I'm on rim brakes right now and I'm doing fine, totally fine. But as you saw in the beginning of this video, there's not a lot of tire clearance if you want to go really wide, like 45, 50 millimeters. You're either stuck with cantilever brakes, which are a big pain, more than, more than anything, or the mini V brakes, which are very powerful, very good, but you know, you can't really run anything wider than 40 millimeters. And then there's also mechanical disc. I think that's something that's very overlooked. You throw on a pair of compressionless inner cables, like I have in this bike, the brake cables. You know, brake cables like this. Get a pair of dual pivot or a dual piston, dual piston, what's it called? Disc calipers. And I think you're gonna get pretty close to the power of hydraulics. Of course, you gotta keep your rotors clean and choose the right pads, but you know, a lot of the issues people are having with disc brakes comes down to the hydraulics. And I'll admit, I have to keep a separate bleed kit for my disc brake bikes and it's messier. It just requires more where a cable actuated brake, rim or disc, you just need a pair of cutters, an Allen key, and that's it. Super simple. No fluid leaking anywhere. Now hydraulics definitely feel more luxurious, don't get me wrong. But I think we all as consumers in the bike industry, we're overlooking that cable actuated disc brakes can actually solve a lot of the headaches that hydraulics can. Again, I've never used cables for disc. I'd like to try them. I know the Surly Straggler, which comes in a similar color as this, has cable disc brakes, and that's a pretty sweet bike, honestly. SRAM mechanical 1x11 cables routed like this on the outside, so you don't have to deal with any type of, any type of uh, internal routing when you're replacing the gear cables. Again, another headache that the bike industry created. Now they want to sell us a solution in the form of electric shifting. Floating through the sand. Um, and yeah, like, you know, one by 11, it's all you need. Cable actuated discs. Someday I'd like to try one of those. It might be a happy medium because there's no denying disc is, disc is definitely nicer than rim, but for the road, Reginald was talking about the wind space and how they're really good for the road or they're really good in the rain. And that's actually pretty cool. If you can make rim calipers, like the Textros that came with my Wabi, if they can fit 32 millimeter tires, there's really no reason for disc anymore. Sure, there, there's always a nice to have. What you wanna try over here? Always gonna be a nice to have. And I like my disc brakes, but you can't deny that. 
you're trying to go simple got trying to go with a simpler system this rim brakes I said check out his video I've uh, it's he's got me rethinking the rim brakes and I've got to say I've got a giant TCR disc brake bike that can only fit a 30 millimeter tire and when you have a bike that like the Trek Imanda I don't know if there's I think they discontinued it but on Trek's website the disc brake model can only fit 28 millimeter wide tires what's the point of having disc brakes then if you can fit a 32 mil tire with the disc brakes or 35 now it starts to make sense because then you don't have to worry about the rim the rim brake clearing all the mud but you know of course v brakes work but the industry has abandoned disc brakes uh abandoned rim brakes but uh it'd be nice if they brought them back honestly give us consumers a bit more choice because uh if you're gonna have one bike to do everything i personally geez i personally feel that disc brakes are the smarter choice because you can do more with them yeah it's more maintenance yeah it's more maintenance yeah it's a little bit more a little bit more money up front and to operate but you know you you just have one bike that does both road and gravel and you don't have to worry about rim material you don't have to worry about the, the rim brake clearances but having two or three bikes just having one dedicated road bike rim brakes are all you need there's no reason to have two three four bikes with the uh very um very complicated disc brake system see mini v brakes very very powerful very powerful now speaking of rim brakes wabi only makes bikes that take rim brakes and it's great I think every single wabi i've ever had well i've only had two of them my wabi classic with rim brakes it's been the easiest bike to live with from a maintenance standpoint many 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 times i've been stuck dealing with the tubeless dealing with the disc dealing with a whole bunch of stuff hold on doing a whole bunch of maintenance on my other disc brake geared road bikes while my wabi classic just sits in the corner all i had to do is put air in the tires lube the chain and it's ready to go and i could say the same thing with this wabi thunder i did have a lot of trouble with the brakes at first but that's kind of where the rim brakes the wide tire rim brakes they take a bit of finessing but ever since i put the mini v's on absolute perfection the brakes are very very powerful on this bike and as you can see 40 millimeter tires no problem if anyone from wabi happens to be watching this video wabi if you guys made the thunder in a 1x10 1x11 1x12 if you started to make geared road bikes i think that'd be that's a wrap those things would fly off the shelves you'd reach a lot more people you reach a lot more customers if i could if if this bike was a 1x11 or 1x12 or 1x whatever you know once you could fit a 10 11 or 12 speed cassette in the back you can the world is your oyster as far as what gears you want to put on there that's pretty much it this could be your adventure bike endurance bike all road bike you could fit 40 mil tires yeah rim brakes but who cares rim brakes are simpler a wabi used to make the lightning re which was a geared road bike it came with micro shift 2x10 and it was basically the wabi lightning with 2x10 gears they stopped making it for some reason maybe people didn't want it this was around the time that disc was starting to enter the industry a lot of people wanted the wider tire clearance and that bike only topped out at 25 but if they made their one of their models their lightning or their classic in a geared version and they made the thunder in a geared version that'd be absolute perfection that'd be a true one bike does everything a model like this an all-road model could benefit from some cable actuated disc brakes similar to the surly straggler we were talking about before but there's really no need for disc brakes if you want to keep things simple. And with that being said, we're going to wrap up this ride. The ride by the numbers, 13.2 miles, 311 feet of climbing. And we were out for about an hour and a half. Average speed, 11.3 miles an hour. So overall, the bike did absolutely great. 
Lobby is actually taking some pre-orders for this model right now. So if you want to get yourself a get yourself a set or get yourself one of these, if you just want a simple, no nonsense, single speed all road bike, this is the bike to get. Again, that's a whole other topic for a whole other video. But yeah, bike did great, a lot of fun. Hope you enjoyed it. And as always, I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.